Hi guys, I'm going to go through creating something like this in Unreal 4. So we've got a brick wall that you can uh, vertex paint some concrete over the top of. And uh, the bricks on this are fully tessellated and displaced so you can see the bricks actually pop out from the surface. Um, our concrete also pops out slightly above that as well. And the, the sort of trick with this is that when we vertex paint in some of this concrete, it kind of goes into the cracks first and then it starts to build up over the top. So you get a much more realistic uh, fall off than you would get if we just had, sort of had blobs of this going on over the top. So, I'll start with a fresh new level. Um, just quickly, a little bit of setup. In Max, you're going to, or whatever it is you're using for modelling, you're going to need something that's quite reasonably well uh, tessellated to start with. So it's these vertices that we're going to actually be painting. Um, the more of these you have, the more control you have. I could probably optimise this a bit more. It just depends. It just depends how much control you want. But the more verts you have, so if you've got a sort of 200 by 200 verts, that would be the equivalent of having like a 200 by 200 pixel Photoshop file. So it would give you that kind of control over painting it. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to do is with something like this, put it all into one smoothing group. Let me just stick my diffuse on. Stick it all into one smoothing group so that you kind of get nice soft edges um, and obviously make sure that you've unwrapped it and stuff properly. So <coughs> I've just got this, um, probably doesn't quite look right, but um, if your bricks are going to be broken off, they're going to be broken off generally leaving some of the bricks intact rather than just randomly breaking. Um, this is a tiling texture as well, so it's it's unwrapped outside of zero to one space, uh, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, um, let me just bring in some of my pieces in here. And uh, I think I've got material on this, so let's just clear that. Clear. And so that I can see sort of what I'm doing here, I'm just going to bring in a, where are we? Bring in a skylight. Okay. In fact, what I might do is just change my skylight to movable and my light source to movable. Um, just so that whilst I'm building this material, I don't need to keep on building my lighting. I'll set them back to stationary and build it later. Right, so let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a um, brick diffuse texture. I'll show you that. So this is kind of an albedo map, I just went and grabbed this off uh, Google Images or something quickly to demonstrate with. I probably need to do more with this to, I've got things like shadows in here that you shouldn't really have on an albedo map, so really I should do a bit more to try and get rid of some of this, this shadow. Um, but it, it'll do for this. In my alpha channel I've got my displacement map, which again I've just very quickly made um, <clears throat> but you won't be able to create this from the image though, you'll need to you'll need to just paint it yourself. So I've just kind of gone in and brush. Black is low, 
black. Black is low and white is high, so I've just gone and drawn the bricks through like that. But you want to do this, if you want a really good result, you want to do this slowly and precisely with the, with the graphics tablet. So it'll maybe, maybe take you half an hour or so to, uh, to create this map. This is a much better way of creating the normal map as well. So when I've finished, um, let's just create a white layer. Oops. So when I've finished, I'll have, I'll have this kind of thing. And then what I would do is overlay a bit of my diffuse texture. Let's desaturate it as well. Something like that. And then I'd, I'd put this through Endo and then I'll get a really nice result. So the stuff that's black will, will kind of really go down low. The stuff that is white will come up high, but I still get a little bit of the sort of noise and detail in the bricks. I'm not quite sure what I did there. Okay. Um, so if you throw that through something like Endo, you'll get a nice brick normal map like that, which you can see is just nice and neat. Um, most, m most of the detail in here is that the bricks are high and the, uh, the mortar is low. But I've also got just some nice noise on the actual bricks as well to, to add a bit of detail. Right, so that's my diffuse and my normal map, that's how they were set up. Let's create a material. So I'll call this brick to mat or brick video. Okay. okay, so the basic setup, let's just sort the easy things out. That's my diffuse map into diffuse goes into base colour. Normal goes into normal. And one thing that I'm going to do first of all is, well, let me save this. First of all, I want to use material instance because I'm creating quite a complex material. I want to see what I'm doing in real time as I tweak values. So I'm just going to create a material instance. And that'll give me this that I, I'll be able to tweak values on. So that material instance is the thing that I'm going to apply to my brick wall like that. Okay, so one useful thing that you is good to do in the material editor is uh, you might want to scale up the strength of your normal map, so make it stronger or weaker. Now, in order to do that you need to uh, you need to multiply it but you need to not multiply the blue channel because if you multiply the blue channel the multiplication that you do in there will just kind of undo the multiplications that you do in red and the green channel if you want to know why that happens um, just do a bit more research into exactly how normal maps work and that should make sense but for now, what I want to do is multiply the red and the green channel and then just bypass doing this on the blue channel. So I'm just going to create, hold down S and click and this will create just a, a scalar parameter. So this is just a number, just as simple as a number. And I'll call that normal strength. I can never spell strength. That's right. So I'll plug that into a, uh, both these, so I'm going to multiply the red channel by this normal strength and multiply the green channel. And then what I need to do is, uh, so I've got this uh, uh, three vector here, so this, this white dot here has got the red, the green and the blue data all together. Um, I've only got one node to plug in the normal, so that's expecting that three vector. I need to get back to that. So all I need to do is come out of here and do a make and make a float three like that. So my red gets multiplied and goes into the X. X, Y, Z is red, green, blue. So the red gets multiplied and goes into the red. The green gets multiplied and goes into the green. And the blue just goes straight into the blue. 
if I plug that into my normal now, you'll see in my material uh, instance here, I've now got this normal strength multiplier. Um, and if I zoom in here, you should see as I scale this up, my normal map gets stronger and stronger and stronger and weaker and weaker as I go back down. It's weaker, gets stronger. Okay, so that's um, a really useful little thing that you can do with normal maps. I do this on sort of all of my normal maps really. What I could do is just create a little function that does that and then I could just plug this straight into one node. Um, but it's only it's only a few nodes anyway. Okay, next thing, let's do our tessellation. So this is the thing that's gonna make the bricks pop out. Um, first of all, let's turn it on. So no tessellation, we're gonna use triangles and what we're gonna do is click crack free displacement as well and that'll stop uh, as the like a forward facing wall and a side facing wall pop out it'll stop a crack appearing between the two it'll just kind of fill that space in okay, so that's the tessellation turned on when we turn that on you'll see that these two um, nodes appear or these two inputs rather appear so we've got world displacement and tessellation multiplier so first of all, I make a new scale parameter. Let's call that test amount. Save that. I'll just quickly show you what that does. So the tessellation is just gonna add lots more polys and verts into our model. So as I bring up the, this tessellation amount or this tessellation multiplier, you'll see it just starts to tessellate and adds more and more verts. So two is the highest you can go, but what the way this works is as you, may be hard to see on this video, but as you um, come away from an object, it kind of scales this tessellation up and down. If you go beyond two, it'll sort of change the tessellation um, how long it stays at full tessellation, how far away it turns at full tessellation. But two, two is probably a good number to have for this, um, especially with the number of verts. And you can see, because my verts weren't very evenly distributed, so I've got some bits that are closer together. Um, this is kind of a bad example, um, and really I should have, I should try and keep my squares as even as I possibly can. The more even they are, the, the better this will this will work. Um, so I, I really should have taken a bit more care when doing this. Uh, that's why I've got these bits where I've got these kind of bands where things are close together. So it'd be better if everything was nice and even like it is around here. Um, but this will work absolutely fine. What you could do is you could actually, because it's mostly in the cracks where we're going to have this tessellation, you could kind of put verts specifically down there to, to handle those, those higher areas. Okay, so that's, the, that's this tessellation multiplier. That just turns up and down how many verts it's going to add. Um, the other thing we've got is world displacement. So the world displacement is going to be um, it's going to actually make it pop in and out. So we've got this displacement map that we put into our alpha channel where black is low and white is high. So what we could do is we could put a multiply in and plug this into world displacement. And if I make a new scale of parameter and we call this disk amount, So this is the displacement, how far it's going to displace by. And then we can scale up the amount that that's happening with this. So if I plug that into there, now back in my material instance, I can turn on displacement amount. And what should happen is as I increase this up and down, you see the bricks start to pop out and pop back in. 
So there's a, there's a bunch of problems with this at the moment. I think mine's going very slow, probably because I'm recording this video. Um, but it, this is a mess. Um, it's all going in the wrong direction and uh, it's just kind of, it's just wrong. It's just not what we wanted. So the reason that's happening is because at the moment we've got this height map but all this height map is doing is telling us how much to displace it by. So black is not very much displacement and white is lots of displacement. But it's not actually telling us what direction to displace it in. So it's not telling us you know, whether to, to push it forwards or backwards or upwards or left or right. So we need to add in that data. Now our model has got uh, normals on it and the normals will point out from the faces. So the normals are a really good way of us being able to see how different polys and different different verts, different faces are uh, how they're aligned in world space. So where whether they're pointing upwards or outwards or left and right. So we can access those with a vertex normal. So this is going to convert our vertex normals to world space normals. So now if I if I spun this model round um, it would still whereas the top of this is pointing up now if I was to spin it around like that it would convert it so that the, the, this face here was then pointing up so that's what we want we want that data and what we can do is if we multiply that by our displacement amount and then we multiply this so this is going to tell us now which direction to displace things in. So this vertex normal is, is like X, Y, Z data. So if it's pointing outwards towards us, it might have a value of 1, 0, 0. If, it was, if the face was pointing to the right, it might be 0, 1, 0. If the face was pointing up, it might be 0, 0, 1. So it's going to multiply those three numbers by this displacement amount. Then what we want to do is multiply it by this alpha channel which will tell us um, where to do that displacement. So if this alpha channel has got black in it it's going to multiply this by whatever is in here and in here we'll get say a number of, of let's say 10 but then it will it will multiply that by the black in this texture um, so we'll get nothing again. So if I do that we should find that um, if I go to 10, things now kind of pop out in the correct direction. So if I was going to go to 20, they pop out quite extremely. Um, I think about 3 is good. I don't like the way that on this, uh, these bricks are popping up and down as well. So I want to get, I want to sort of clamp it and tell it to not ever go up and down. I just want it to, to displace out and in. Now you might not want to do this, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how this stuff works. Um, so I said that this has got three numbers in it. It's got X, Y, and Z directions and how, how you know, which direction stuff is pointing in um, as an X, Y, Z number. So we can break that apart. And if we break it out into float 3, we've now got access to just our X, just our Y, and just our Z. Um, so what we want to do is, to stop it from going up and down, we just want to make sure that Z is always naught. So what I'll do is I'll break it out, and then I'll make it again. But this time, I'll, uh, I'll keep my red I'll keep my X how it was, I'll keep my Y how it was, but I'm just going to replace my Z with zero. So now it's just going to make sure that Z is always zero. If I save that, then it will no longer pop out up and down. So if I made this really high, let's say 30, 
you can see they, they pop they pop out sort of this way and they pop out to the right this way but it's never going up or down okay is that done so that's just neaten this up a bit that's my brick displace Okay, so the next thing to do is just add in this con uh, concrete with the vertex painting. Um, so I've got another video on vertex painting, so I'm going to go through this quite quickly. You can watch that if you're not sure what vertex painting is. Uh, what I need is a... First of all, let's just get our... Um, let's get our wall and let's just make sure that for the moment it's got no vertex painting data in it so I'm just going to fill it all with black you won't see anything happen um, but I'll fill that all with black now what I want to do is to paint in the red channel so I'm just painting in the red channel with with just kind of pure uh, white so a value of one and as I paint in the red channel I want the concrete to appear over the top so to gain access to the um, that vertex color data, I just need a vertex color input. And um, very quickly, let me just plug this into base color so we can see what's happening. So now you can see I can paint kind of red vertex color data onto it. And all I want to do is just say where you've got this red, put concrete, where it's not red, so where it's just this black here, leave it as brick. Okay, so we're going to use alert for that. And what we're going to do is have our brick in channel one, our concrete in channel two. So our brick in channel one, uh, sorry, our brick into the A of the LERP, our concrete into the B, and the way that they, those blend together is going to be powered by this red vertex data. So let's just plug that into base color. And now you can see as I paint in, this red, um, I'm getting the uh, the concrete appear. Obviously, this isn't at the moment. The big problem is that our displacement and our normal map is still staying the same as the brick. So let's just replace that. Uh, I just need another lerp. That's going to be powered by my vertex color again, and this time I'm going to. blend between my brick and my concrete. It's a normal map. So this should look better now because my, my concrete will have proper normal map for concrete. You can see that's definitely looking better. Um, but I'm still getting the displacement. You can just about see the, 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 the the concrete still popping out like it was brick. So let's just set up a new. Uh, let's just set up a new displacement for concrete. So all I'm going to do is take the world space normals, uh, the vertex to world space normals, again, multiply them by something, and I'll just multiply them by number, and let's call this number. Concrete height, and then it's just the same thing. So I'll just lurk between what I had before, so the the brick displacement and what I've got for the concrete displacement, and again that's all going to be powered by this red channel into world displacement.
Okay, so now I can, if I turn this on, I can kind of pop my brick out, uh, my concrete out from the surface like that. So I probably just want that at the height of a, about one or so. Right, two. Okay, so now we need to alter our fall off on this because at the moment this is just kind of it's just painting on in a very kind of blobby way and it doesn't look very realistic with how it's blending with the brick. So to do that, what I normally do at this point is uh, I want to see what's happening in this preview window, um, but it's really hard to see what's happening because when I'm using my vertex color data, it just assumes that this channel is is full of red color. Uh, so I don't, I kind of can't see any result happening in here. So what I normally do is make something like this, which is just a uh, just a black and white image, but it's got a bit of a fall off. What I want to do here is I want to say that where this image is white, make it concrete. Where this image is black, make it brick. And where it's n not white or black, so where it's kind of grayscale in here, I want to make it just the mortar lines. So instead of it falling off into grey, it'll fall off into the mortar. So let's bring in this mask helper. And what I'm going to do is everything that's got um, everything that's got this red channel plugged into it from the vertex color, I'll replace it just with the red channel from this mask helper. So now you can you can just see that I can visualize what I'm doing in in here, which will help me make this material. Okay, so I'm just going to take another swatch of this diffuse just to keep things a little bit cleaner. I want to have the fall off going into the mortar lines, and um, I've got the kind of data to, to describe that, which is my height map uh, that's in here. So what I can do is I can combine those two things. So let's make a multiply and let's multiply that by that. Um, so that's kind of the idea, except this is the wrong way around. I wanted my mortar lines to be white so that it paints in the concrete. So all I need to do is just flip this inside out, which I can do with a one minus. So let's stick a one minus in there first. Okay, so this is right now. Um, this is basically what I wanted, but I only want this to happen in the areas that are grey around here. Um, so here, for example, I just want this to be pure white. I want this to be pure black. But all of this bit is how I want it now, with, a, with the fall off going into the mortar lines. So what we need to do is just to add in um, the bits that were pure white. We just want to add those back in to this. What we can do is we can use a, from our mask we can use a power. If I preview that. What you'll find is that this, so this is just going to multiply this texture by itself. The more that I increase this exponential, the more the greys will, will crush down towards black. So as I increase that to say 10, um, you can see the greys kind of crushing down and we just get this white left over. So it'll get the fall off will get harsher and harsher as that increases. So that's a simple way of doing that. Um, let's plug in a scalar parameter to this. And we'll call this fall off power. Um, right now we can add these two things back together. So now that we've got just the bits that were white and we've kind of got rid of the, the gray from this, let's just set that to 10. Um, we can add that back into. So we've got we've got this, and we've got this, and we're just going to add those two things together to get this. 
Um, so this is good, now we've got the bits that are white are white and the bits that are grey have got the fall off into the mortar lines. The only thing you'll notice here is that where the white is added to the white you can still see that. Um, that's just because this value now has gone above 1. So we want to clamp that back down and stop it, stop any of these values from ever coming above 1. Um, oops. So we can do that with a clamp and we'll just set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 1 so no values can ever go above 1 or below 0 and that's kind of doing what we want now. Um, the other thing that I'll do is in order to be able to control how much of this kind of how far out this fall off goes uh, into the mortar. I'm just going to add in a multiply here as well so that I can scale that up and down. So this is kind of the fall off power. Uh, this is going to act more like the fall off distance. So let's call that fall off distance and plug that into here. Let's just set that as a default to 1. Okay, save all of that. And um, right, what I want to do now is so all of these LERPs that were powered by this, I want to replace this with my vertex, red vertex color data. So that should go into here, and it should go into here. And then the result of all of that, so this is going to control, let's comment this, this is going to control my fall off, fall off control. So that's going, to that's going to alter the way that the brick and the concrete blend. So now I just need to plug that into all of these LERPs so that it powers the way all that happens. So it powers the way it happens for the diffuse, for the uh, displacement, and for the normal map. Save. Okay, so if I bring my strength down a bit now, I should be able to paint in and just kind of paint into the cracks. Okay, so that is working, but it's not it's not very effective. Um, what I can do is, if I increase this fall off distance to say 10, then you'll see that that's, that's working a bit better. This might be too far now, let's try five. Try decreasing the fall off power a bit. Let's go further down with this T. Five. So I just need to get these values in the right place now. Um, okay, so this isn't quite behaving the way that I expected it to and the reason is that I've just got my maths a bit uh, messed up. So what I've done is, because I've multiplied this and then I've done the 1 minus, um, I'm just, I'm never getting up to a value of 1. So what we need to do is just swap this round. I want to do the 1 minus first. So let's get it the right way round first, which makes sense. So black is low. Uh, black is not is not going to colour in the concrete, and white is going to colour in the concrete. Then let's do a little bit of maths to multiply it, um, and that should work much better. Okay, so now I can paint in. Um, you can see if I paint in a little blob somewhere, like down here. 
you can just keep on going in and it'll create it'll go into the mortar first which is what we want if I increase or let's go down that fall off distance and you can see that that's going to kind of spread out so if I put that up to let's say 50 it kind of spreads out if I go down to 1 it becomes more localized um, so let's have that I think quite high for that is good let's go up to 20 and my fall off power should kind of soften that effect so if I go down to 1 it um, this probably should be the other way around where really. it's kind of one is going to be um, a softer fall off and kind of 10 is going to be a sharper fall off so I think I think kind of high up for this as well is good maybe 50 and 30 something like that and now I get some nice control to paint in okay so now to finish this off, um, I'm not going to bother with doing this for the video because it's all just kind of standard stuff, but at the moment I'm lurping between my values for diffuse on uh, the brick and the concrete and the displacement and the normal map. Uh, I haven't actually got any kind of roughness data in here yet, um, or potentially metallic, but you wouldn't need that. You wouldn't need a metallic for brick and concrete, obviously. Um, but you'll need to do. You'll need to kind of repeat this to set your um, your roughness up. So my roughness, I've actually got a roughness map. For my concrete is in the alpha channel of my concrete. Now I haven't got a roughness map for the brick. What I'm going to do is just use the red channel, turn that inside out. Um, let's have a look at this. So I'm going to try and scale that down a little bit. So let's just use the power node. And this time, rather than going more powerful, let's go probably less powerful to get this bit close together. You see the the, the mortars whiter so the mortar is going to be rougher and I think that's right the brick should be a bit shinier than the mortar is and then what I'll do is I'll just add something onto this uh, and let's power that with a scale of value let's call that brick roughness So then I can just make this higher or lower with my brick roughness value. Save that. This is probably going to want to be a, a negative value in here. Um, so this brick roughness now should make my bricks more shiny if I go down like this. If you can see that, you can see over there where the light's shining on it. So that's going to be more shiny, this is going to be less shiny. I think a value of just around here probably for brick is good. Um, normally I wouldn't recommend doing, I'm not a big fan of doing roughness maps like this. I think you should really author a separate roughness map in Photoshop. And you can probably see that if I can get the concrete to catch the light. Um, you can see where the concrete is catching the light because I've authored that as a separate roughness map. It, it does give a much better result. I, don't, I think roughness maps really work best when they're, they, they aren't related too much to the diffuse. So you really want to like create something um, that has different details and different data in it to what was in the diffuse. So this will do just for, for now for, for something for the brick so that we've at least got it in the right area. But really if we want like nice little bits that shine off it and catch the light like we've got with the concrete, um, we ought to just create that in, in Photoshop um, and pack it into an alpha channel or uh, pack it into a, a separate map if we need to. Um, whatever makes sense. Okay, so that's it. I hope that was helpful.